Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and we have a patch notes update. This one has a lot of new features, including a new feature called Nine Slice that is going to be very helpful if you've been having to replicate it or duplicate it yourself in code. It is now has official support, and it is really, really cool. So let's break it down one at a time. The first thing is Nine Slice support, and what's kind of cool is they have a What's New Help Desk post, which you can click on, and it'll take you here, and they break down some of the big features. So if you want to read instead of watch, this is the place you would go. They break it down pretty clearly, explain what's going on. But essentially, Nine Slice, the first big feature we're talking about, allows us to take any sprite. It doesn't have to be a message box or UI item specifically, although that's what they show here, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate. You can take any sprite, and you can activate this little thing called Nine Slice. So when you do this, it slices up your sprite into nine different portions. And you can see here that, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the middle one, nine. You can select a specific slice and it will highlight that portion. You can click over here and it highlights it by like, it actually highlights everything else, but doesn't highlight that section. So it's a little unintuitive in that regard, but the feature itself still looks really cool. So what I've done on this one is I have chosen to hide because there's actually a lot of different options you can have here hide the center sprite and I lined these up right in the middle. So now this over here, I can play around with the live preview of what it's gonna look like when you actually activate Nine Slice and use it inside of your game. So I can stretch this sprite as much as I want in any direction and you can see that it still looks really good because it's taking care of all of that behind the scenes. This is really great because you don't have to have multiple sprites taking up more room on your texture pages and slowing down your game. You could just have one and it does everything for you behind it. And there's a lot of different options so you don't have to hide the middle. You can stretch it, you can do mirroring on the bottom if you really want to go kind of weird and funky. But what's really cool is there's a lot of things you can do and Nine Slice is the big new feature in this one. Now I'm gonna make a video covering that in just a little while, so stick around for that if you wanna see more about it and I cover even more in there. Next up, we have an update to the Animation Curve library. And this one's pretty cool, but fairly straightforward. Now when you use a Bezier Curve, it's actually gonna show you what that looks like inside of the canvas, whereas before it didn't show you it like this. So it's much more simple and straightforward to show you what's going on and how your animation is actually gonna play out inside of the sequence itself. There's a couple more updates when it comes to exporting packages on a Mac. Now you can export it both to a zip and to the App Store, which I don't think you could do a zip before, so it makes it a little bit easier. Exporting on a Mac, it gives you a little warning that it looks like uh, there's an, another window comes up and it's trying to run while your game is building. They say ignore that, so there you go. Check this out if you wanna know more about it. There's a few things for the compiler change sounds. Essentially what you should be using is OGG or WAV files. MP3 still always gets compressed as usual, but you probably already knew a lot of that. Live updating is kind of cool. It's very small, but essentially when you choose a color, now you can open this up and you can see it reflected immediately inside of here instead of having to run your game to see how the color change looks when you're blending colors. That's pretty cool. Let's go back to here because that's about all they have on that help article. So they've also updated the IDE manual and tutorial locations. So they have a website now, yoyogames.com slash, well, whichever language you're in, en for me slash tutorials. And this is where they're gonna be hosting all of their tutorials and demo content from now on. They are trying to make the installer size smaller and smaller, which is why they took the manual put it online, now they're taking the tutorials and demos and putting them online as well, making it easier for people to download over slow internet and get it up and running. They also updated a lot of the sequence for D&D &D specifically. So the nodes and uh, the anime ed editor and the D&D &D editor, they changed a lot of the sequences inside of there for it to work better and to make more sense, kind of fixing some of those bugs and issues that people using D&D &D were having. Then they have a ton of bug fixes here. This is the longest bug fix line 
I've seen in a long time. So if you're having a specific problem inside of Game Maker where you're doing something and the game becomes unstable or crashes or something isn't working, chances are they fixed it right here. If not, you can always report new problems. That's how they find these bugs. So do that if you're still having problems after this. One important thing to note is you do need to update the runtime as well. So there's a whole new runtime that's going to have to be run and there's more stuff inside of here. But for the most part, it's going to be fairly the same. Runtime is more behind the scenes. So if you really want to dig down deep and how they're changing some of these functions and how they might work, that's fine. On the front end, if you call any of these functions that they're updating, they're going to work exactly the same. But on the back end, they're making it easier and working better. But you do need this runtime in order to have nine slice support. And I think some of these other features as well, like exporting on the Mac. So make sure you update both. Most of the time when you update Game Maker, it does update both of them. Like if you click on download and you uninstall the old one and install the new one, it'll update the runtime. But specifically, some people might go back and change the runtime if they're working on an older project. You will not have access to these features unless you update to the runtime as well. But that's all there is to it. It's a big patch. Make sure you grab it. Play around with Ninth Slice and check out my tutorial on it as well to learn exactly how to use it and how you can use it in your game to save time and make your game even better. But that's all I've got for you. If you like this video, leave a like. I would appreciate it. It shows me you enjoy the content and keeps me making more. But as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.